Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another experiment. I had a comment in the Indian Wonder Kids experiment uh, to make them a powerhouse to do Cyprus and so that's what I'm doing. If you've got any suggestions for countries to try this with let me know and we'll be able to take a look absolutely. So we can see here before anything has happened they're sitting 94th in the rankings so not too bad but nothing spectacular uh, if we take a quick look we can see who they're kind of sat around so they've got Bahrain Madagascar Luxembourg below them and then Israel Jordan Congo and Georgia above them so not really the teams you want to be fighting against you want to be up the top uh, some of their best players are Konstantinos Leifis uh, who's currently at standard Liège uh, you've got Andreas Caro at Maritomo in Portugal uh, and also Gigorius Castanos as well. Uh, again, they're not bad players, but hopefully by doing what we've done with upping the rankings at the youth academies for Cyprus teams, as well as introducing a database that allows you to play as Cyprus, so hopefully that will get us some good players, uh, along with the general wonder kid kind of stat that the country has, where you can edit the nation's details. We've made sure uh, that they'll be very, very good. So the youth rating's at 200. So that's all good. Uh, yeah, so from there, let's jump ahead, see how they get on, if they can do very well in World Cups, Euros, anything like that, uh, and go from there. Okay, here we are then. So they've gone up to 84th. We're five years on. So they've got up a total of nine places, which isn't bad. It's a good start, especially considering not many of those Wonder Kids would have come through yet uh, to, to really hit their peak. You can see here, though, Nicholas Georgiou has gone off to Paris Saint-Germain. I mean, he looks quite the player, doesn't he? Um, <laughs> not a bad striker at all. Some lovely finishing stats. 33 caps, 27 goals for them. So very, very good indeed. Um, you've also got Castanos there as well, who we obviously saw previously. Um, so let's take a look at their key player, which is George Yu, who we've just taken a look at. So I don't need to look at him again. Uh, they've got Johan Valum as their manager. Uh, let's take a look at the schedule then, how they got on in those years. So European, let's jump ahead, pass the qualifying. Did they get into any actual competitions as of yet? Doesn't look like it. They're all just the qualifying stages at the moment. That's fine and understandable. Uh, they play in a 4-4-2. Interesting. But we'll jump again for another five years, see if they've gone up anymore uh, and where they're at. Wow, okay. So they're 42nd. They've overhalved their ranking all the way up to 42nd, which isn't bad, really. Um, I have to say, just below, I mean, just above Chile and Switzerland, it's great. I can't believe Uzbekistan so high up, but they're above them, and so is Romania on 40th, and then there's Syria and Serbia. So they're, they're doing very well. They're climbing up the leagues, which is good to see. Nicholas Georgiou is still the main man for them. He's moved from PSG to Manchester City, so the big money clubs coming in for him, which you'd expect. 82 million valuation, 300k a week, 65 goals and 82 two caps not bad not bad uh we, let's see if we've got anyone else so pablos charalabos uh right midfielder uh 23 years old 43 caps not too shabby uh antonis sava uh antonis sava i should maybe is right we'll see a uh, goalkeeper very very good 5 11 little small for my liking but each to their own uh michaelis christodelu christodelu I'm so sorry if I butcher these names. I, I mean, they're not real people, but I apologize to any Cypriots out there uh, watching this. Um, yeah, 61 caps for the left back for Cyprus. He's been around the block. Bologna, Salzburg, Inter Milan, Bruce Dortmund, Arsenal. He's been all over Europe uh, to find that football. Uh, let's take a look at his, that their schedule, though. How have they got on if we fly back through? Any competitions that they've managed to reach as of yet? Uh, looks like they they reached the Euros and they even got out of the group. They got through to Belgium where they lost 3-1 in the second round. Uh, not a bad showing. 1-0 against Greece, 3-2 against Norway and only just losing to France 2-1. Pretty good. Pretty impressive. Uh, if we go through to 2029, uh, looks like they've actually got to the World Cup as well. And they've got Nigeria and Uzbekistan in that group. Two teams they can definitely beat. So that's great. They're also in the European League Division A, uh, 
again, the Nations League, and they've got Holland, Italy and Germany in their group, just shows how much they've shot up this table and become a bit more of a powerhouse. Uh, they're certainly doing better than India hat did uh, already. Uh, let's jump another five and, and take a look. They continue to rise. They're 25th in the world rankings. Who do they sit around now? So you can see here, they're sat just above Turkey and Czech Republic and Wales, uh, and just below South Korea, Ghana, and South Africa. Uh, so they're, they're working their way up. They are fighting all the way up there. Uh, let's take a look. So Nicholas Georgiou continues to be their key player. I mean, I'd be surprised if... He ever stops being the key player, even when he retires. He's at 30 years old now, 137 caps and 100 goals. That is truly very impressive. Uh, Andreas Charalabus uh, at Napoli and Chelsea. He's a centre midfielder. He's got 68 caps for the national team. Uh, and we've got Nicholas Christoffi as well, another striker who's looked very, very good. Uh, Georgius Georgiou. Uh, again, another striker slash centre midfielder who's been at AC Milan, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, a lot of big clubs, 52 caps, 10 goals for him uh, already. Let's take a look five years ago. So we saw they were in the World Cup. They did get through to the second round, beating Uruguay in extra time. What a win. They did unfortunately lose to Norway in extra time uh, in the third round. Looks like they leveled things in the 90th minute only to lose it in extra time which is a shame they haven't done too great in the <laughs> in the nation's league but it happens it happens so a good few more european championships again they got through to the quarterfinals this time losing to portugal 4-1 uh, but very very good turnout slovakia norway austria and turkey all beaten um, they did a bit better in the nation's league as well uh, playing portugal england and switzerland getting wins against Switzerland, Portugal, uh, and a draw against England. Not too shabby. Uh, we then go forward again, more qualifying, uh, more European leagues. Uh, and then that is looking it at the moment. So we will jump again. Well, let's take a look at the tactics. So they're going for a 4 4 at the moment. Interesting. Very attacking. So they're very confident in their ability. Uh, let's jump another five years and see how they've got on. All right, then. They're 15th. Another 10 jumps up the rankings. Uh, we can see there above Australia, Cameroon, Uruguay now, just below United States, Colombia and Croatia. OK, that is very, very cool. We've got a new key player for them. Marios Oyanu. Uh, I'm going to be butchering those names. I Again, I do apologize, but very, very cool. Only made three caps, made three appearances for him. He has seven finishing. What? <laughs> he has seven finishing, but they obviously must be playing him out wide as a winger. Uh, is he left-footed? Yeah, so he'll be one of those ones who gets down the side, crossing those balls in. Georgius, Georgiou, how are you getting on? 108 caps, 38 goals. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, Andreas Charalabus. Again, 125 caps for him. Uh, what a player. Dimitris Theodorou, one cap. Only one cap at the age of 28. Just shows how good their team obviously is. Dimitris Ianu, uh, 58 caps, three goals. And then you've got Nicholas Christoffi, 92 caps, 50 goals for the national team. So doing very, very well. Very well. Uh, Schedule-wise, let's jump back and take a look. So we saw there some competitions. Then there was the Euros. They beat Scotland and Finland and lost to England to go through to the second round. Unfortunately, it was too much for them to get above the Italians uh, where they lost 2-1. A bit of a shame there. Uh, but when we move forward, we can see that they did make it to the World Cup and they did make it to the third round, only losing out to England 3-1. Uh, beat Cameroon on penalties and comfortably beat Colombia and Jamaica, which is good to see. Shows their quality. Oh, and they've absolutely smashed the European Nations League. Croatia, Poland and Portugal all standing no chance against them. Uh, going unbeaten in that competition. I've just keep changing the competition list. Uh, and then there you go. So because they did so well in that, they got through to the Nations League semi-final, uh, beating France 2-1. And then in the final, they beat Spain 2-1 to win it. So they've actually won a national competition. Uh, the Nations League is now Cyprus's. Uh, wow. I mean, we're not going to know any of these players, but that's the lineup that won it for them. Dimitri, Nicolas Dimitriou getting the goal for them, uh, playing for Inter Milan, 59 caps, 17 goals. 
uh, is the initial one. And then we've also got Nicholas Christoffi, 92 caps, 50 goals, the striker uh, for Monaco. Quite, I mean, look at those look at those appearances to goal ratio. That's ridiculous. 342 appearances, 233 goals. Not bad at all. I'm going to keep saying that because it's ridiculous. Qualifying, they've absolutely smashed things. Uh, and it looks like they are in to the champion Europe Euros with Croatia, Switzerland, and Poland in their group. Let's see if they can defend the European Nations League as well. Um, very impressive indeed. Let's jump another 10 years, take a look at the performance uh, one last time and see if they can quite reach any higher than 15th and if they can do any of the major tournaments uh, other than the Nations League. Wow, okay. So now we're in 2050 and they are 8th. They are eight. That's a whopping seven rankings. It gets tighter and tighter as you go up the rankings. They're above Portugal, Belgium, United States, Colombia, and only just behind Argentina, Italy, and Germany. I mean, if we gave it another 50 years, they could well be the best national team. So let's first off take a look at Stefanos Sotiru, who is deemed their key player. Um... Where does he play? So he's a centre midfielder. Uh, looks pretty well-rounded, I have to say. 97 caps, 8 goals for the national team. Played 250 times for Tottenham, so a loyal, loyal player. Uh, Savas Mikhail, uh, playing on that right-hand side. 30 years old, 96 appearances and 22 goals for the national team. Not great finisher, but he's definitely one of those out-and-out -out wingers, an old-school winger. Uh, you've got Evgenios Avram. Uh, who's fluent in Greek, French, Spanish, English, Portuguese. He's been all over the place and he knows every language in the world, as well as how to score, as he's got 61 cap goals in 80 caps for Cyprus. Uh, we've got Kostas Kiriakou, 50 caps, one goal at defensive midfield, playing for Chelsea currently. Uh, Kiriakos Antonio, another player who's only 23, but played 62 times at right back. I mean, he's going to be smashing appearance records 97 appearances at 27 though that might be the one to do that's Satorio who we just saw um there let's take a look at the schedules how have they got on in the years since we left them then um so in the Euros they got to the quarterfinals losing to Belgium in the end uh beating Iceland, Poland, Switzerland and Croatia all on the way. So very, very impressive. Uh, they are, oh, unfortunately, they lost. It was revenge for Spain, losing 2-1 in the Nations League final. They did, however, beat um, England, which is good to see. Uh, World Cup qualifying looks like they will have got to that yet, but they did get knocked out in the third round to Argentina, beating Chile, Jamaica and Ghana in the groups. Uh, good to see. I'm going to have to stop doing that in a minute. Uh, <laughs> Oh, wow. I can't press the next button. Um, European chat. Oh, they lost in the Euros, getting knocked out in the group stage. I mean, it looks like they're in the group of death, I'll be honest, with Germany and France in there. Uh, no offence, Northern Ireland. Um, <laughs> didn't mean to cause any controversy. So that's, four, that's five years past. Let's go into the last five here. We've got Peru, Algeria and Chile all in the world. It, well, Peru and Algeria in the World Cup group stage. They beat Chile in extra time in second round, beat Brazil in extra time in the third, and lost to Germany in the quarterfinals 2-1. That's quite the run. I mean, I don't think the extra times helped them at all, but it's impressive that they managed to do that well anyway. Um, let's keep going. And we've got the Euros here again. They got to the quarterfinals, getting absolutely hammered by England in the end, 5-1. Rob Brain, what a name that is. Currently playing for Real Madrid. Wow. <laughs> I love that. But um, we're not here for England. We're here for Cyprus. And they did pretty well getting there. Uh, they drew in Spain, beating Sweden and Switzerland as well, along with Norway in there too. Um, and then finally, uh, we can see the World Cup here. They got to the quarterfinals of that, losing 5-1 to France. Another kind of route in the end. But got... Through the third and second rounds comfortably-ish, beating Morocco 1-0. Uh, and then Nigeria and Chile were the group stage competition. Uh, Tactics-wise, they're playing a 4-4-2. So it's stuck with kind of what they know throughout the years. So no real surprises there. That's amazing. Um, that's that's impressive. They're, <laughs> they're sat eighth in the world. Um, 
that's not bad going for such a small country uh, when you think about it. Only 1.1 million in population. That's tiny, especially in comparison to India. It's interesting to see. I wonder why India didn't didn't do as well as Cyprus in how they've developed. Is it because less of their players were being able to go over to Europe as quickly and get into those competitions to play with better players and against better players? I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, before we do go, though, I will show you kind of the best players in the world and where the Cyprus players sit. So you've got the likes. I've just seen a Gibraltese player sitting there. That is amazing. Anyway, um, so we've got Janis Ilya, who's actually the Cypriot player. 29 years old, 77 caps, 5 goals. Playing for Man City. A great centre-half. I mean, you can't go wrong with those stats. 17 heading, 16 marking, 16 tackling. He's got a current ability of 189. So he's fourth best player in the world, uh, according to the game. I need to take a quick look at Luke Forrest. A job, Gibraltarian player who played for Atletico Madrid. He could have played for Spain. They didn't want him, and now he's one of the best players in the world. Mental. Um, but <laughs> have we got any more Cypriot players here? We've got Stefano Sotru, who we saw playing for Tottenham. He is up there. He's one of the best in the world. 173 current ability. Not bad at all. And then we've got Savas Mikel, who is, again, 171 current ability. And Avram, 170, who can still be rising. But there you have it. Um, we've made Cyprus into a powerhouse and it was very, very easy to do. Just whack up all the stats and simulate 30 years into the future. But I hope you did enjoy. If you've got any other countries you want me to try this with, let me know. I'm happy to do so before FM22. Uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you next time.